Imagine how a mother feels when, just as she's delivered her baby, it's whisked away to the resuscitator before she's had any chance to see or touch it. This approach means that the mother has to wait anxiously to see, touch and talk to her baby. The baby has to suffer the sudden loss of oxygen supply from the placenta, the loss of blood volume redistributed from the placenta, and the familiar voice of its mother is replaced by that of strangers. Resuscitation with the cord intact is the solution. Let me show you how. OK, we set the timer when the baby is born. We dry the baby and place it on its mother's abdomen, skin to skin, and covered with a dry towel. We may be able to see the baby has good tone and moving and breathing. There's nothing more to do. Mum looks a bit more glamorous here than usual, but full of joy at the birth of her baby. She's not the real mother, of course, and the baby's not a real mannequin. But it should give you an idea. Before making a decision about resuscitation of a term baby, you need to know the heart rate. And is it breathing? Try stimulating the baby by rubbing its back. If this does not help, we will need to initiate resuscitation with the cord intact. Mum can watch her baby and give encouraging words. Auscultation is the recommended way of determining the heart rate, but may be difficult in a noisy delivery room. Here I'm using a readily available fetal Doppler machine, which displays the heart rate. This has been surface wiped, just as you would with the stethoscope. The cord is still intact and oxygenated blood is still returning to the baby from the placenta. The baby is not breathing and the heart rate is less than 100, so we now need to initiate ventilation with PEEP. You could have the baby on a LifeStart mobile trolley, but here we are using a Neo-T and the PEEP to go. Watch the pressure rise. If the pressure rise is insufficient, there must be a leak around the mask and needs to be readjusted. Watch the chest rise. Now check to see if the heart rate is improving. A pulse oximeter on the right hand may now start to provide saturation levels and a heart rate. But if the baby is severely depressed, the circulation may not be sufficient to get a reliable reading. The ultrasound Doppler, however, should give a satisfactory reading, but the alternative is to get the ECG. The bradycardia following early cord clamping has been known since 1963 when Brady published this in the American Journal. Severe bradycardia after early cord clamping was recently confirmed to occur in lambs by Hooper's team and in humans by Dawson's team, both working in Melbourne. At the Birmingham conference in April we confirmed that bradycardia does not occur during a physiological transition. A variable degree of hypovolemia must occur with early cord clamping. And here we can see this baby would have lost 150 mils of blood if early cord clamping had been carried out. Early cord clamping also causes hypoxia in the newborn baby. Here we can see that the fall in the oxygen saturation, previously thought to be physiological, does not occur if cord clamping is delayed. 